Hello everyone. So today we will be discussing regarding the endometrial sampling. Well, why this endometrial sampling is required? The endometrial sampling is required for certain purposes. In case of postmenopausal bleeding, in case of abnormal uterine bleeding with thickened endometrium, or the evaluation of the endometrium in case of infertility patient, and of course to rule out certain infective pathology like tuberculosis. Conventionally, the endometrial samples we get from the dilatation and curettage method. We dilate the cervix. This is the uterus. We dilate thus this cervix and we take out the sample, the endometrial sample. The inner layer of the uterus is endometrium and we take out the endometrial sample by curating. So that is the conventional age old methods. But the demerit of that method is that we may, we may miss out. If there is some cancer tissue are there or the growth is there, we may miss out while curating that part. That's why the sensitivity of that uh, method is very poor. Another method is the looking uh, to the growth and taking the sample that is called the diagnostic hysteroscopy and biopsy. We will see through the camera then what is uh, what has happened inside the uterine cavity. If there is any growth or lesion is there, we will take out biopsy from that area. But it requires gadgets like the hysteroscope, the operating channel, and the, the setup, operation, uh, operative method, anesthesia has to be given. So those are the requirements. That is the demerit, but it has a very high sensitivity and accuracy also. So in between as an OPD procedure, what we conventionally do for getting the endometrial sample is the people biopsy. This people biopsy is absolutely non-invasive method or semi-invasive method. We take in the OPD as an OPD procedure and uh, as in walk-in type patients. So immediately the patient can go home. That is the demerit. What is this? This is a papal cannula and we get from uh, the uh, from the vendor like PB India. So we don't promote, but we get from there. And uh, this is uh, like a this is three sterile packed people this is like a syringe and the piston and uh, here the method is that uh, while withdrawing we will push the syringe without any dilatation we will push this uh, syringe uh, to the endometrial cavity uh, then inside the endometrial cavity just withdraw the uh, piston then rotate the piston to 360 degree or one or two times and also withdraws gradually so that so whatever the endometrial sample will be there, it will be deposited in this cannula. Then we will uh, unload this uh, specimen to the uh, specimen vial, the formalin uh, solution, uh, normal saline uh, solution vial, and that will be sent for the histopathological study. So this method is called the pupil endometrial biopsy method, and this is a very convenient method. Patient will hardly have any discomfort and patient can immediately go home. No antibiotic is required, only mopping of the vaginal canal and the cervix is required. Sometimes if the cervix is not straight, then we can hold the cervix with the Ellis forceps and we can introduce the uh, pupil uh, cannula, just to withdraw it and rotate for two to three times. Then you take out and give the sample. The demerit is that while uh, bleeding, if the patient is having the bleeding, uh, we may not get the endometrium. Uh, in that case, uh, we should wait for the ideally we should wait for the uh, bleeding to stop. If at all the bleeding is not stopping or we are uh, in an urgency to evaluate, then first sample you discard because that will be a blood uh, blood sample or the clots. The next uh, again you introduce and you can take the sample and you can also test uh, in the vial by sucking whether the clots will uh, usually uh, it dissolves. But the endometrium will not dissolve, so that will float in the uh, um, saline. In that way, you assure that the sample you have sent is having the endometrium and you sent for the histopathological study. And in our experience, uh, regularly we used to do, and uh, if there is lesion is there, the malignancy is there, definitely it will come. The sensitivity is very high, more than 95%. In certain cases, we don't get malignancy, but the endometrial thickness is more. In that case, we used to go for the diagnostic hysteroscopy. Suppose a postmenopausal lady having an endometrial thickness of 15-16 mm, 
but uh, the report came out to be the normal or the proliferative type. In that case, we used to go for the diagnostic hysteroscopy and again the evaluation of the cavity. And we have in our experience, we have seen that those are mostly the polyp that used to be in the endometrial cavity and we take out the polyp and we, again we used to send for the biopsy. So, the message is that this is a very convenient and easy method, the OPD procedure and all the postmenopausal bleeding should be evaluated for the endometrial biopsy. We should not go for the immediately hysterectomy or take out the uterus without evaluation of the endometrium. That is the first thing. Premenopausal bleeding, having intermenstrual bleeding or irregular pattern of the bleeding uh, we, without use of the hormone that and the endometrial thickness is more than 12 to 13 mm, then that should be also be evaluated for the endometrium, uh, the endometrial pathology. So those are the cases that must be evaluated and any postmenopausal bleeding uh, must be evaluated. Postmenopausal endometrial thickness, if, uh, thickness if routinely uh, scanned and it is more than 4 mm, that also should be screened uh, as a part of the screening program. So to conclude, the PPL endometrial biopsy is a very good, simple method, non-invasive method to screen and to diagnose also or the endometrial pathology, particularly in the malignancy. Thank you.